I'm Mariah Petzold, and today I have Jake Radowick. He is one of our Addicted to ROI Inner Circle members, and we're very happy to introduce him and talk to him about his journey. So welcome, Jake. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, doing really well. Good. Well, let's let's dive in. So uh, what inspired you originally to start real estate investing? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I was a uh... I was young and I was working uh, as a project engineer in the Seattle area. And I was trying at the time I was working a normal job and also working as a valet in the evenings at a local restaurant in the Everett area uh, and just trying to identify a way to uh, continue. I, I was like, well, I'm working as many hours as I can. How can I make money without without working? How, how can I make money when I'm just sleeping? That's cute. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, the owner of the restaurant and I were having a conversation on the curbside as I was standing at the valet stand. And he goes, you know, you got to, Jake, you got to invest in real estate. It's like the, the equity, uh, the equity that you'll gain in your real estate is going to be more than you'll ever make working at your W-2 normal job as well as your side hustle. Mm -hmm. So I just knew that was the next step. And being able to make money without having to work hours that, that yeah. um, the passive cash flow was, it was huge. Yeah. Well, so you've been in the inner circle now for a few years. So uh, tell us kind of what did you have before you joined the membership? Uh, great question. So uh, before I joined the membership, I had uh one townhouse in Lake Stevens, Washington, and then I had bought a triplex in uh, Spokane, Washington, and then I was currently in the middle of a house flip in Spokane, Washington. All right. So you had a few. Were these uh, were some of these ones that you had bought and lived in and kind of house hacked, or were all of them investments? How did that? You know. Uh, great, great question there. Um, so when I bought my first property in Lake Stevens, I've been asked before, like, what was your tactic? What was your strategy? Was it Ted Burr? Were you doing a live and flip? And it's like, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I had to, uh, I just, I had to get in real estate and the quickest yeah. way to learn was to jump and jump get into it <laughs> and, uh, learn through taking action. Right. And so I did that. And then, um, I went about as far as I could by myself before joining addicted to ROI. And, uh, I was, I thought I was doing good at the time, but you know, joining addicted to ROI really helped the inner circle and surrounding yourself with those people. Uh, you realize how much more you can accomplish. And it was really, uh, it opened my eyes to, I really wasn't thinking big enough. Like a huge thing is if your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. And I was, I was settling and that was something that, uh, Jennifer Beatles really, uh, put in my head. Like, it was like, yeah, you know, I am, I am thinking too small. You're right. So. Yeah. yeah. So what, um, what parts of the membership were helping you kind of get over that and get over those fears? You know, I really think the biggest thing I know that the membership of Addicted to I brings multiple multiple benefits. I mean, you you get a you get uh, connected with agents all over the nation. You get resources. You get uh, educational tools. You get live uh, these uh, live videos that you can join on and uh, that talk about the market, go over deal analysis. So the opportunity for education is there. Mm -hmm. And that, and I don't want to discredit that. That's a huge benefit as well as being able to connect and network with, uh, all these agents and uh, property managers and other people investing, well, stick to agents and, and property managers and contractors. It's also a huge benefit, mm -hmm. but hands down, no questions asked. The biggest benefit is the culture. What you're doing is you're surrounding yourself with people that are doing more than you and they're really stretching themselves and they're also really uh really constructive like about pushing each other and holding each other accountable to make sure that they're everyone's reaching their goals and helping each other yeah uh, you know outside of addicted to roi in my growth i've heard all over that 
I would never have what I do today because I'm 27 or because I'm some sort of age or because I haven't done it before. But I've never heard that. And every time I every time I heard a you can't do that, that's that's too risky or I would just go back to inner circle and I would talk to people that have done it. And, you know, they're like, yeah, you can do it. There's no problem. And that positivity and that culture that's going to make you mentally strong and really help you know, like give you the confidence you need to take on that next challenge. And like I said, if it ain't scary, you're not going big enough. <laughs> um, that's, that's the biggest benefit right there. Yeah. Yeah. We do have the greatest members. Everybody is so amazing and, and helpful and, uh, you know, kind of there for each other and, and the create the creativity that comes out of the group, honestly, is, is pretty awesome. Everybody's doing these, uh, different kind of deals, um, you know, from the, from the vans, um, the van rentals <laughs> to house hacking, everything. Um, so I know you are on this journey, right. To have 30, is it 30 units or 30 properties? I've, I've changed it up. It, it was when I first started, it was 30 doors before 30. Okay. Like, that just ain't big enough. That just ain't big enough. So right. we got to go like, if that, if it's not scaring you, it ain't big enough. So, um, I've changed it to 50. I want to do 50. 50 so. doors. I, and 30. I don't care about, 30. I don't care about doors as much as okay. I, I, um, We'll get into this a little later, but I want to double my gross revenue that I have right now, which would be about 50 doors, I think would do it. Okay. All right. So, so are you, are you doing like the kind of reverse calculating of where you need to be? Uh, kind of. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of, I kind of get the gist of, well, the markets are, are all different, but, um, I, uh, I know that, uh, I know that 30 doors was too it's 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 too small like I th and what's just great so anybody listening to this i mean you your goals are always changing i i want when i first started three i bought my first house in march of 2020 and i just wanted to have five single family houses before i turned 30 years old and it is three years later i've had my nose to the grindstone and now i have 28 doors and six properties or uh, five properties not to include the one i'm living in uh over two different states and if i would have known that i mean i would have never set that goal so low but now i realize how how big i can go and i have to readjust mm -hmm. um and so yeah I, I 50 doors is just kind of a number but really doubling my gross revenue would be a great goal in the next three years okay all right are, are you trying to work less or quit your job or you know, that's a great question. Great, great, great question. Uh, so the whole reason I got into real estate was never for me. Uh, you know, I grew up with parents that worked really hard. One was a, my mom was a nurse. My dad was in Afghanistan uh, all but 29 days. Out, so my whole high school career, freshman through senior year, my dad was in Afghanistan all but 29 days out of the year. And he gave a lot. He gave a lot of his time uh -huh. Uh, to give us. And so what really got me in investing is number one, I wanted to be able to give my future family the same great life I had while still being pre being present, which my dad had to give up. The other thing is I have a brother with disabilities and I understand that I'm not only responsible for myself, my future family, but also my current family. And so I don't, I have no ambition to retire. I have no ambition to work less. I have ambition to uh, provide for my future wife, my future kids. And then my brother that uh, I also have the privilege of having um and uh you know he's honestly my why he's, he's the reason i got started and he's my biggest inspiration every day and so if i can just retire everyone around me and then work, work my butt off uh, i'd be very happy oh my gosh i love that i love that i know you and i were chatting a little bit because right now you're actually looking for a specific type of property right there in washington state right yeah a purpose a purpose driven yep yeah mm -hmm. you want to talk, tell us about it a little bit yeah yeah so i actually i uh i don't enjoy investing in washington as much as you would think living in washington but um well why why is why, that why why great question great question because your, your capital can go so much further and give you so much uh better cash flow and better um better growth i mean it's just going to give you all in all a higher return elsewhere I like right. to put it as a metaphor. I'm a big guy into working out. And it's like if you would only it's like if you would only shop 
at the at the gas station at the corner closest to you, you're not going to have the, the best health, but it's the most convenient. That's like what it's like investing in your local you know, local market. But if you're willing to do what's uncomfortable and go to the the market that has all the healthy foods and produce down two miles down the street, yeah, it's a little bit more uncomfortable, but the returns are a lot higher. So sometimes what's comfortable isn't the best thing for you. Right. Right. That's great. I love that. It's yeah. a great analogy. Yeah. But yeah, to, to answer your question, I kind of went on tangent there. I really just want to, uh, I want to find a, a one bedroom, one bath, uh, multifamily property here in, uh, locally in the, uh, North Idaho or Spokane that I can, he can live in and then the other units can pay, uh, uh, pay for the mortgage. So basically, instead of paying for him in the future a place to live, I can put him in one of my units and have, uh, he can always have a free place to live. I love that. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Why yeah. is is everything you guys? I mean, you gotta you gotta figure out why you're out there grinding and, and investing and and uh, and the, those whys are pretty awesome, Jake. I love that. Thank you. So you invest now in Washington State, and you said one other market you want to yeah, share. Yeah, ten Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. I got a uh, uh, some. I mean, I, I found a great real estate agent and great property manager. Uh, well, great real estate through the group, and then through working with that real estate agent, I, I interviewed multiple property managers. I always recommend you guys do that. And I found a great property manager down there. That's uh, I still talk to weekly. We have weekly meetings and we go over uh, all, all, all the units. So I have 24 units uh, down there. And so we go over how they're doing uh, and getting those stabilized. So uh, um, it's been great. I definitely have a high interest also in St. Louis and Minnesota. I mean, I think those two markets are great. And uh, if you have high interest in those, joining Addicted to ROI will really help you because uh, there's some great agents and resources on the page that will uh, help you connect with agents, contractors, and property managers in those areas. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we have, we have close to 200 agent referral partners right now that are uh, working with us and working with all of our investors. So they are all uh, investor savvy, investor experienced agents in their markets. And um, they have all those connections for property managers and contractors and everything to to really uh, allow our investors to dive in. So yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Well, so what, uh, what's what been some of your challenges so far for investing? Great, great question. Um, first of all, I'm a control freak. And so <laughs> investing out of state, and if you, if you, if you are investing, then you, then you want to be in control. And I would say, look, if you're anything like me, investing out of state, it's going to be the scariest thing you ever do, but it's going to be the best thing for you that you could ever do. I know a ton of local investors that feel like they're getting the best deal because they can go there and they can work on it themselves and they can, uh, they can property manage it themselves and they're going to do everything themselves to cut costs. And I think that minimalistic mindset is going to kill you. I think investing out of state takes somebody who's very, uh, wants to control everything and it cuts you at the feet and makes you delegate. And that's what you should be doing. You should not be buying locally just because you want to cut expenses. I mean, you can, you can, should be buying out of state to where you can delegate that property management. Nobody wants to be, a, you know, some people may want to be a property manager. I don't want to be a property manager. I want to be an asset manager. And so by investing out of state, I'm able to delegate the property management. I force myself to be more hands off. And what it does is it frees up my time to go allocate that to more deals. So rather than thinking about saving $200, think about how you can be using addicted ROI to get a deal, another deal to gain $200. Yeah, I like that. Very good. Well, oh. so when you were investing like around in your local area, were you hands-on? Oh yeah, 100%. I actually, uh, April April 1st, 2023, is uh, that's three years of investing complete uh, and managing uh, tenants. And uh, so having th uh, just that 30 doors is, uh, I f finally said, I was like, I'm tired of go checking on uh, broken appliances or tired of going and checking on heaters aren't working. It's time to put those off. So yeah, I can easily make $500 extra a month by managing my own properties, but that's a minimalistic mindset. Why would I think that way? I should give up that $500, delegate this out to somebody else and figure out, go spend that same time that I spent at my property 
managing and what I already have and spend that time figuring out how I can make the next $500 to offset that. We'll have another asset that's appreciating. And so you asked me what challenges I've had uh, as an investor. The biggest thing is this, uh, letting go of the reins a little bit and being willing to delegate. Uh, the second thing is uh, just being younger and uh, the connotations and the that come with that people like I went, had to go through to, when I bought a 20 unit apartment building. I mean, that was a million dollars and my net worth was not a million dollars. And it was very difficult to get a loan. I had to go to multiple people to, I, I went to two hard money lenders and two local banks and then two national banks. So I went through six different resources, but I didn't give up. I said, this deal works. I'm going to close it. If you're not going to do it. All right. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Hope to work to, with you in the future. And I, I moved on the next, but I didn't give up. And, and, you know, that mental resilience is really huge, especially as you guys grow. It's always, you're always going to get pushback. Nothing's going to come. It, it's not all easy, but if you don't give up and you just are, a, are firm that you're going to make it happen and you're going to find a way and things are going to happen and you're going to overcome challenges, it, you'll be surprised. Just keep your head down and keep going and just don't let anybody stop you and, Three years from now, you could have 30 doors. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. So so what kind of lending did you end up figuring out for that one? <clears throat> so I had, um, I actually use a national bank. I actually use US Bank. I had a great uh, business relationship manager at US Bank. Um, we went through underwriting three times. So we went through underwriting first time. They're like, hey, you don't have an, uh, what is it? You don't have enough reserves. I was like, okay. He's like, we go. I get a co-signer with reserves. Okay, well, you don't have enough experience. So then I like, um, okay. So now I need a co-signer with experience. It's like, well, that's not going to cut it either. And so I, I kind of, I've been talking to this guy for six months, and I'm like, look, I'm not going away. This deal's closing. How do I make it close? Tell him, just don't be asking me here. Just man to man, what's going on? He goes, all right. If you do this, this will work. And so I ended up, um, I ended up getting another, a different cosigner, uh, and then I had to put th uh, an extra eight percent down. But hear me out here, guys. I put twenty eight percent down, closed the deal, and then imme they immediately started the process to, of getting giving me a second because the, the the rents were so low. So I bought it. It was making sixty eight hundred dollars. Market rents are fourteen hundred dollars, fourteen thousand dollars. But the rents, the guy had owned it since 1999. Mm -hmm. And and so it's he's only had these, I mean, they were making under 50% 50 50 of what market rents were is what they're paying. So I wasn't selfish. I wasn't greedy. I brought them up to 75%. Now it's sitting at like $11,300 is what it brings in a month. Crazy. In three months, I went from $6,800 to $11,300. How did I do that? I went, I talked to the tenants. I was fair to the tenants. I didn't, I kept everything hundred dollars under market. So they couldn't find anything cheaper anywhere else. And I was like, look, if you guys are willing to pay this, this is fair to both of us. And it worked out really well out of 20 uh, units. I retained 19 of them. Wow. That's awesome. So, yeah, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's been a, like, it's been a grind. Like I, I want to make it clear. Did I know what I was doing? Absolutely not. I just took action and I, I figured it out as I went and that's going to be huge. You're always going to like, I don't know anything about short-term rentals. I'm looking to start a, sh um, my better half and I are looking to start a short-term rental this year. Do we know anything about it? No, but we're going to figure it out as this is how you grow. And, uh, and that's part of the thing. Real estate's a journey and you're going to grow and you're going to just enjoy the journey. It's, it's all good and, and good fun. Right. You got to get over your fears and you got to you got to take the leap. And I think that's mm -hmm. with any any strategy and any type of real estate investing um, for sure. Well, it's super exciting. I love that you're thinking about uh, dipping your toe into short term rentals. And of course, we have a ton of people like myself that own them already within the group to help you out. Yep. And give you advice yeah. and show you the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it's so, that's so amazing. And you know, you're right. You're going to hit, you're going to hit challenges no matter what strategy you pick and no matter what property you pick, um, you know, you just kind of have to 
be persistent as, as one of our Facebook users uh, wrote persistence and belief that it will happen. Yes, they agree. Yeah. They agree. You know, you gotta, you gotta just keep at it. Um, gotta find those deals first, right? It's all about yeah. finding the, finding the magical deal and the rest will happen and we'll follow. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I mean, all, all three of my deals in uh, Memphis, I underwrote plenty of deals, but the, the deals that I actually closed on were brought to me by an agent from addicted to ROI. So if you're looking, if uh, this is also great, you not only, not only does addicted to ROI in a circle, give you the deals list that you can go underwrite yourself, but then you, as you start talking to agents in the areas, the markets that you're interested in, they're going to bring them to you. Yep. So, I mean, if deals are an issue, if, if uh, leads are an issue, great opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, uh, so I have to ask now that you've changed your goal uh, to <clears throat> 50, what, what happens once you reach your goal? You know, um, uh, this is so funny guys. Uh, I, I have, I, you know, I love my girlfriend and she's so incredible. Um, and I, I always, I always tell her, I was like, you know, when, uh, when we get to 20 doors or when I make over a hundred thousand in gross revenue, <clears throat> we can buy a house, we can buy a normal house and live in it. Cause right now we live in a duplex in Spokane. So, um, all right, current, my, my new goal. So I currently have 28 doors, 30, including my girlfriend. I make $240,000 gross revenue a year. Um, so I'm doing, I like, I'm, I'm in this place that I never thought I'd be, and I'm so blessed and I'm thankful. Um, but I really, I mean, addicted ROI is great at pushing me. And, uh, I really want to hit $500,000 in gross revenue. That's my new goal. And I, and, uh, but the other thing is I got to get, I got to keep my better half happy. We got to get a house. Um, so 50 it's doors, important. Important. yeah, 50, 50 doors, minimum 500,000 K in gross revenue is my goal. I got to get a house. Got to, I got to just, uh, do that. And then, um, and then really, uh, just focus on where I'm going to go from there. Um, that'd be huge. I, I really like, I don't, I don't know. I really want to, I really want to build a portfolio in Minnesota and also St. Louis too. Mm -hmm. I really like those markets. I think they're great markets. I'll, all three, Memphis, St. Louis, uh, Minnesota, great agents are found on the addicted ROI inner circle. But uh, just find the next challenge, the next thing. And man, if I could catch up to Randy somehow, some way, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> but, Talking about Randy Shell. I know. I don't think any of us can catch up to Randy. No, that guy's, a, that guy's an animal. <laughs> he's, he he's an animal. <laughs> so, he's just doing big things. Yeah. Well, amazing. Well, okay. So how can people find you and follow you if they want? Uh, you can join the Addicted ROI Inner Circle. I'm on there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also Jake Radowick on Facebook and Instagram. I'm no crazy influencer. I'm just a, I'm just an average guy working a W-2 job that's uh, taken upon to try to grow a real estate portfolio. So Jake Radowick, R-A-D-A-W-I-C-K and on Instagram and Facebook. Amazing. All right, Jake. Thank you so much for for coming on here and joining me today, and uh, and letting us all into your journey. Um, it's so in inspiring, and you know, I love hearing about all of the all of the wins and all the challenges too, because you know, all of this is going to help us grow in our own journeys. So that's exactly it. Just to, just one piece I could leave you with is like, I like to make this metaphor. I'm a huge guy in working out. And everyone's definition of success is different. Everyone's definition of health is different. And there's multiple ways uh, to invest in real estate. You can do short term, mid term, long term. Uh, and same thing with working out. I mean, you could be huge into CrossFit. And my better house really, really been into CrossFit. You can be big into yoga. Or you can be big into bodybuilding, weightlifting. Just get in there. Just like you, you say at the gym, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Investing just consistently invest and I'm, I'll be super excited to see how the whole group grows. Absolutely. All right. Well, you heard it here. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Right. Thank you.